This show is brought to you by Texture. Texture app lets you tap into the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere using your smartphone or tablet. And the best part, Texture is offering our listeners a free trial right now when you go to texture.com slash joey. That's right, go to texture.com slash joey right now and start binge reading for free. That's texture.com slash joey. Show is also brought to you by Datsusara. Go to dsgear.com slash joey to get 5% off all their extremely high quality functional gear for jujitsu that's made with hemp textiles. They have bags, geese, rash guards, t-shirts, and more. dsgear.com to get 5% off. Show is also brought to you by onnit.com. Go to onnit.com and use code word CHURCH to save 10% on all of their amazing optimization products like Alpha Brain New Mood, Shroom Tech Immune, and Shroom Tech Sport. Oh shit, August 17th, 2016, the devil was buried today at sea, lit on fire, dragged, he joined ISIS, then they stabbed him again. It's the church of what's happening now. What's up, Lee, you still getting flashbacks? Uh, I'm, I'm still vibrating. I saw that, I really saw that. <laughs> the music is bringing me back, is what it is. Here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, shit. It's Wednesday, bitches. How you doing, Lee? I'm back. I'm I'm back Finally into the back. world of reality. My main man, Jake Allenberg, is in the house. Fucking my champion. My true <laughs> champion and shit. The type of shit I like. Lee, tell him what happened here. Because Jake don't know what happened. Well, Jake, I uh, I took some, allegedly took some acid le- the other night. <laughs> allegedly. Allegedly, someone, someone said maybe that happened, and it just, uh, I don't know how much I took. That that that, that might be an, a question for Joey, because th- here's the thing. There's a lot in this that I don't know. Like, I don't want to call it blacking out, but it was just the trip that I was on <laughs> was not here. <laughs> It was like I was vibrating, I was shaking, and I just, and yeah, what really set it off was the music. Like, I'm not even a music person, Joey really knows that. But like, just, I don't know if you've ever done it, you you obviously can't do it right now, you saw it as listening, but the Osama's music, listening. I did it last weekend. You did? <laughs> no. Oh, okay. But the music, yeah, it's, uh, it was just, and it wasn't like a bad thing, like it was, this, I've heard of bad trips before. But that wasn't that. Like, I, I, I didn't, I wasn't freaking out during it. No. He just kept asking me if you were in the hospital. <laughs> Am I in the hospital? He would get, like, talk to me for a little while, and he would go, Am I in the hospital? No, you're not in the fucking hospital. What hospital looks like this? What hospital is there a picture of Led Zeppelin on the fucking wall? Put me in that goddamn hospital. I didn't see anything. I vividly remember, like, as I was coming out of it, half of the room I could see as, like, the real world. The other half was still swirly in colors and... I was like, oh, shit. This is... And then, then you kept telling me the cops are here. And he'd be like, uh, uh, yeah, the cops are coming. Because I would go in and out of, I don't think consciousness, but like like understanding where reality was. And we'd be talking. He, and he would just look up and be like, cops. Like, close the door. The cops are coming. And and then like there's sirens near here. There were sirens all night. He would look at me and go, oh, the cops coming. I thought he called the cops on me. <laughs> Why would I fucking call the cops on you? My crime stop? I would never no, call the cops No, but I didn't think I didn't think to arrest me, but to like bring me to the hospital. You should have turned that music on from the the show cops. <laughs> What's going on, my brother? <laughs> Not much, man. It's good to be here. It's good that uh, you know, I mean, I've known you a long time. I've known you. I was telling Lee that. You know, years ago, you were coming to comedy shows in Irvine. I'm yeah. Like, Look at Jake likes comedy and stuff. And then somebody said somebody else told me they saw you at a comedy show. I'm like, wow, these UFC guys love comedy and stuff. Because a lot of guys come up to shows. I saw Jake, uh, what's his name, last week at uh, Denver. They were all there for okay. the tournament. Yeah. So I saw Jake Shields there. And uh, a lot of the guys from one of the schools came. Uh, Einstein was there from mm-hmm. 10 Planet. So I saw a lot of guys. So... 
you know, the worlds are similar. Like I was telling you, you get beat up the first two years. The first two years of comedy, it's just like, it's just like signing up to for fucking abuse. Yeah. It really is, you know, and you go to these bars. I was telling somebody yesterday about a bar in New York, your yeah, old triple in. I used to go there. You could smell the comedy in the air. Like it was that old, mm -hmm. that old funk that you'd walk in, people smoking cigarettes. You could smell dried beer and puke. <laughs> That's comedy, you know. Right, when right. you go to a nice comedy club now, you're like, this is nice. When yeah. comedy comes away, you go like at midnight. Right. And you sit there till two, have a few drinks, people stroll in, you know. It's mm -hmm. uh, it's weird. I'm surprised more athletes in like, I guess, the, for lack of a better term, celebrities don't go to comedy shows because... Well, they get when, tortured. Well, they do. They get tortured, but here's the thing. Like, I always wonder why... Like, we always say, like, when someone gets in trouble when they're at a club or whatever, I'm like, why would you go to a club? A comedy club seems like sort of a safe place if you want to have a night out. You'll get mobbed a little bit, but if you come in late, it seems like one of the safer options. Yeah, it's, not, it's, not, it's not a bad time. It mm -hmm. really isn't. Oh, I great. never went I to a comedy it. club before I got into comedy. Oh, really? Ever. Like, never, never. I saw, I watched comedy on TV. I thought comics rehearsed in front of a mirror. And then some TV show called you and said, you have 10 minutes, and you just went up there unprepared. That's what I thought. Really? Yeah, I didn't think that you prepared. I didn't know <laughs> what the fuck. After I dealt into it more, I was like, wow, this is what the fuck it is. So. Yeah. That's a world I know nothing about. But You I, do, but you don't. And you right. do, but you don't. It's so weird because it's the same thing. You just got to put the work in. Right. You know, uh, when I watch a fight, I was watching Nate Diaz against Michael Johnson last mm -hmm. night when I got home. It was on at 11.30. I'm like, how oh, are these guys getting hit in the fucking head and walking around? I get hit in the head. I'm thinking about Nebraska. <laughs> I'm thinking about a bunch of shit. Yeah. You know, because you do it for, you know, every goddamn right. day. You know how to fight a little, you know, when you breathe, shake yourself off, get out of the guy's range. You just learn all these things. So mm -hmm. comedy is basically the same thing. It's what you put in. It's the time on the mat. That's right. it. Okay. That's it. That's it. Same thing with fucking comedy. Same thing. You want to learn how to wrestle? You know, it's so weird, like, when you uh, watch wrestling, uh, WWE, and you do those moves on your brother, and you're like, it looks, they, they make it look so fucking easy on yeah. TV, you know? Right. Well, it was interesting, Joey, because when you, before you you were talking about how you're going to the advanced class now, and you're getting beat up, but you like it because it makes you better. Jake, you had a bunch of fights that m might not have gone your way, but I was looking, and you fought, like, seven or eight, like, Champions, people were fighting for champions, like, like just as, like you just fought Matt Brown, Stephen Thompson, Josh Kotchek, Kevin Gastelum, Robbie Lawler, yeah, and you know, Rory McDonald. Yeah, there's That's no crazy. fucking, there's no, no bums in your fucking like road. There's no bums in your road. That's you know? a lineup. So. Yeah. <clears throat> I mean, it's it's one of the nastiest divisions in the UFC. I mean, and it's one of those things too, like, you know. It's such a small game of inches. I mean, you could have a fucking great fight and and make a mistake and not get your hand raised. You know, same same with like uh, you, you you look at like the the Misha Holly home fight. It's like she was getting beat up and then she ends up you know finding a submission or a position and and winning the t the world title. It's like so. It's really it's just there's the game is it's separated by so many inches. I mean, there, I look at some of the fights that that I came up short and it was like well I'm on my you know, my mental scorecard, there was a lot of good things, good takeaways, but uh, I can use that to move forward, you know, but it's like, at the end of the day, I, I didn't get my hand raised, but shit, I made a lot of improvements, you know, moving forward, so. You rose to the occasion sometimes. It's right. so weird. For the jiu-jitsu, like I said, I went up against that monster, and I did something I never did before. Really? I did a knee shield. That's and awesome. I was controlling it with a knee shield, and I'm like, oh my God, I've never done this before. Sometimes when you go up against the more elite guys, mm -hmm. you work better, you know, you just perform better naturally, you know, it's, mm -hmm. it's so weird. It's like when I go to the comedy store, when I go to a bar, when I go to the comedy store, I got to be on my P's and Q's because they're watching the best in the game on their P's and Q's. And you know what I think proves it? Your last three wins were all performance of the night. All three, of the, all the last three of his wins. So it must... Like just for me, because I'm not, a, I don't fight, I don't really know that. But I was just thinking of swinging a baseball bat when you put the donut on it, and it's heavier, and you swing. Like, that's why you do it. So it must when you go up against these people now, you're like, oh shit, I'm fine. Now I did not know anything about the UFC cutting you and you driving out there. I had heard that for the first time. Yeah, that's a true story. <laughs> now when I saw you at Higgins, yeah. were you with the UFC? Yeah, I still was. Yeah, it, it was. 
it was one of those weird things like I, they didn't even I, I didn't have a conversation with uh with Dana or Joe until like eight ten weeks after after the fight and then it just kind of Joe had called my manager and then so I was you know I'm, I'm fortunate to have a good relationship with Dana so I was like hey you know can I can I talk to you and he's like sure of course you know so he's always been like open door kind of with me so I flew out to Vegas and was like you know listen I know I've had some rough fights some that didn't go my way but you know this is not how the fucking story ends this is not how um this is not how I'm gonna end this so I said give me give me one more shot and and he's like all right you know he he uh you know I, I told him that I wasn't you know I don't, I don't care who I was like I don't care who it is um give me one more shot and I'll and I'll and I'll prove to you and, and he did so I was I was fortunate enough to have a relationship with Dana where he gave me another shot but uh that's a true story they and how long have you been at Kings for now um I've been back there uh at least the last year because I, I started training um when I met you where were you 10 years ago what camp were you in oh uh, you I were probably here. yeah I probably just started training uh Munoz had a gym down in Orange County. Oh, Mark Munoz, that's right. And it was right when he opened his gym, and I was training a little bit with with Rafael at Kings, so it was kind of, but more so at Rain. So that was kind of my first taste of uh, Kings. But there was there wasn't very many guys, and it was like very limited. And it's like you see it now, and it's like there's fucking so many killers in there now. But, <clears throat> but yeah, it took a while for them to kind of build that, you know, build the the fighters but uh yeah uh, Cordero's an, an amazing trainer though he's always been good so it's it's been a, it's been a run man it's been <laughs> ups and downs but you got a great smile on your face man yeah, you're happy this was uh when you got the call that it was Matt Brown did you go what the fuck what the fuck <laughs> what the fuck <laughs> yeah I asked for a second chance doesn't Dennis Eva have a cousin <laughs> you know doesn't Dennis Eva have a cousin in Germany about 50 <laughs> that they could send over here for me what the fuck <laughs> right <laughs> yeah no and, and that's what that Brown's tougher than that oh, you know yeah it, it was like I mean it's kind of one of those it's like I'm all in we're playing fucking poker I'm all in and I'm gonna I'm either gonna fucking destroy him or, or he's gonna beat me I, but it was one of those again my back's against the wall and, and we have no leverage it's like this is who you're fighting like fuck it alright let's do it so but yeah I'm like yeah, he's, he's a he's a fucking he's a tough guy he's one of the toughest guys in the in the game and so it was kind of like all or nothing you know this, this is what it is <laughs> fucking tremendous <laughs> tremendous <laughs> I don't know where I was that weekend I'm gonna go what cause I would've thrown a deuce on it I would have thrown a deuce on it just to wish you good luck because you're a sweetheart of a guy. I go, he's uh, got to go for it. He's got to fucking right, go for right. it. And you fucking went for it. Like, I, you know, that's the first thing ESPN put on. Like, I don't know. Who, who was the headliner fight? Um, it was a co-headliner. Who was headlining your card? That card that you went to? Oh, Lawler Woodley. Lawler, yeah. yeah. Nobody went. Everybody went to this. Let me tell you what happened. This is a great fight. <laughs> yeah. I saw you throw the kick, and I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. <laughs> yeah. Look at Jake Ellenberger. <laughs> Oh man, that was yeah. It was one of those like in in my I was focused, you know. I, there's so much shit you got to deal with, and, and <clears throat> like especially with fight week, all this, all the media. But I mean, like for me, it was kind of like I'm not here to fucking have a conversation with anybody to shake a hand, take a picture. I, I could, they can all go to, you know, they can all wait <laughs> until after the fight. I was like, I'm here for one one fucking reason, and that's to to destroy Matt Brown. So again, it was just focus was like hyper focus more than any than more than i've been for any other fight so it was like walking out you know not i wasn't paying attention to not no nobody in the crowd nothing didn't didn't matter it was like matt brown and it was interesting because um i nobody actually i haven't told anybody this but he, when he walked out i was out i came out first and when he walked out he he looked at me and then he looked down and i was like i, I got him i was like I, i'm gonna fucking I, I don't know it was just one of those it was kind of one of those reinforcing like my confidence is high, but I'm just gonna attack him. And and he he did it again when they when uh, when Bruce uh, introduced him. You know he looked he looked up and then he looked at me and then he looked down. And I was like he he you could tell he was nervous. So I was like, for me I, I knew I was like I'm just, I'm just gonna be offensive, just attack. That's the that's the way I you know that's the way I gotta be. I think I've 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 gotten trouble in the past when I get a little conservative and you know start thinking too much get fucking in my own head and and that's it's not a not the time to think man it's just it just go execute sometimes so. i'm watching the fight 
could be anybody and I'm watching and uh, you know I'm a student of the head I, I love the psychology of everything you know during Bad Blood the other day they asked Conor McGregor about his head skills and he loves torturing people and shit but that backfires on you <laughs> you know when you piss on the fence when you uh, yeah, well, piss on somebody's leg as they call it I grew up you know pissing on somebody's leg it could come back and, and backfire on you I came from the old school of the psychological you know it's like when I first went to Jiu Jitsu I used to get anxiety Jay just tons of anxiety and I never had somebody on top of me like that are you fucking kidding me right. are you fucking kidding me that this pressure. is fucking brutal this is brutal and you want me to do what look over my shoulder are you fucking retarded I ain't looking nowhere I'm looking straight fucking ahead I see stars <laughs> I see stars and fucking uh, Eddie chemtrails those chemtrails Eddie Bravo <laughs> yeah. talks about and shit yeah. you know and then uh you watch, you know, whenever two guys are squaring off, I'm zeroing in on what the fuck are they thinking about. I'd be pissing my pants at this fucking point. I'd be pissing my pants just going around in circles and fucking around. I'd just go, I can't take this no more. I can't stop breathing. So the psychological of it, like, I always say I don't like to predict a fight till the way in. I'm, I love all that shit. You know, when Anderson Silva came out and put the mask on against Vito, he was done. <laughs> Vito went upstairs and just put an ice pack on and shook it. <laughs> you know, that that's where it starts, yeah. right there. The words are one thing, but there's little things that you see. Mm -hmm. Want me to tell you why I bet Diaz last time? The way in. When he went like this, kind of flinched, and it was a little too extra of a flinch. Gotcha. Over. <laughs> Game over. I went, I did the comedy show, and my logic was the fucking way in and jujitsu. That style of jujitsu, that deep, when they're that good, that high level, that's too much. That's too much. I didn't know about it until I went to jujitsu, and I would get on top of a fucking 120 pound woman, that's a brown belt with four stripes on her, and just give her a minute. Right. Just give her a minute. She'll get. I used to say, "Get go. Put your shoulder into me, chubby. Watch this." And next thing you know, she's grabbing my jeans and picking her leg up and throwing me over, and I go. Once you're doing it that long, it becomes muscle memory. It's over. Mm -hmm. And if you watch how he submitted him, he sliced the bop, boom, bop. It was like, what What do they teach you that? The third week? Yeah. <laughs> they teach you that the third fucking week. <laughs> yeah. You know, that knee slice you learn later on. But mm -hmm. it's it once. But if I didn't, if I had never gone into a jiu-jitsu studio, I wouldn't have known that. Right. I wouldn't have known that once you get to that brown black belt level, it's a complete different fucking game. Different world. It's a different fucking world. Yeah. We, we were talking about... Uh, Benio Darush, and the first like I, I I'm much I'm, I'm much bigger than him, but like the first time we sparred, I you know I'm, I I kind of beat him up a little bit on the feet. I take him down. I take him down, and boom, uh, triangles me. And I'm like, all right, we go again. Like this is the same route. Take him down again. Fucking guillotines me. Like submits me like four times in the first in one round, and I'm I'm fucking I, I'm so pissed. I'm so mad. No, and I don't know who this guy is. He looks like a guy off the street, you know. And and then I. Then I come to see, like, oh, no, he's a homo black belt. He's a, you know, world champion, ADCC world champion. Like, okay, this, this, but, like, that's the, you know, I'm I'm decent. I'm, I'm not a, a, a jiu-jitsu, like, extraordinaire, but I'm, I'm pretty familiar with, like, most positions. And But th that, that sh I just, I was, like, it, it humbled me. I was, like, these guys are fucking a different, this is a different world. Different fucking world. Crazy. Different world. I, I, and I wouldn't have known. You know, I like the UFC. I like MMA. Mm -hmm. But I got to tell you something. When I watched... Joe Lozon on YouTube doing that crazy shit he does. I was like, I gotta try this. I don't give a fuck if I'm 350 pounds. I gotta try this. Yeah. This, is, this is tremendous. This is, you take a punch to the face, you learn how to take a, a halfway decent punch, the guy's momentum lands on top of you, and next thing you know, you're breaking his fucking elbow. He's in surgery getting his elbow done. Yeah. The momentum, everything's against him. He's getting <laughs> his elbow done. He's, he's watching his hand on the floor, waving at him from the fucking table. <laughs> how are you? Good to see you. You shouldn't have fucking made Sin. that mistake. Bye bye to yourself. Bye yeah. bye to yourself. Yeah, it's uh, I, th that's why you know, and I believe in that psychological little little things that you see. Mm -hmm. You don't mm -hmm. look. Remember, when, I, I remember being a kid and watching uh, when I graduated high school. You weren't even born yet. Cooney fought Larry <laughs> Holmes. He wouldn't look at him. The Great White Hope. All the white Irish people in my neighborhood were marching, fucking, were taking it back. And next thing you know, he wouldn't look at fucking Larry Holmes. He just looked at the floor. And everybody in the room was like, it's over. We lost our money already. Oh, shit. He won't look at him. He won't look at him. That's it. <clears throat> it's all those little fucking things. Mm -hmm. You know, Anderson's the king of them. 
and the sins of the king of them because they're subtle. Right. He doesn't talk. He doesn't do anything. They're just very subtle. He would just mess with you. He would hug you. Even if he'd hug you and invite you to a barbecue, you're leaving there going, what the fuck just happened? Yeah. I'm about to fight him tomorrow and I invite him to a barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> The thing that's weird for me was like I don't know if you watch the embedded stuff. Uh, I like it. It's, I, I think it's really interesting. I like all. I like it all. But the, the the weird thing for me for this one is like I, I we've talked about how the Diaz brothers like do like triathlons and they go running all the time. For Connor's camp, he has like this mansion and he has like this ring put in and they brought press in, and he was doing this drill where he was getting punched in the stomach. Is that a normal drill? And just screaming? Yeah. That's a normal thing to do. Uh, like I, I just seemed like it seemed like he was doing like theatrical stuff to seem right, pretty right. cool, and Nate Diaz was just running for like twelve hours at like the no, <laughs> like the twenty four hour fitness. He just yeah. went there for like twelve hours and just stayed on the treadmill until it like broke. But yeah. it, it, like that that was the one thing to me that would just seem like a little bit too much, a little showy. Yeah, but but that's also his persona. Right. So and he's great. Like it's 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 not that it, it obviously works for him, but yeah. That's, that, that's why I think people, some people like Diaz more. Jake, what's a training camp consist of? Let's say I'm fighting at the Garden. What's the date at the Garden? Just November, right? Yeah, just I'm just talking here hypothetically, mm -hmm. just hypothetically. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, it's there's a fuck. There's a lot of moving parts. Um, right. This is why I just even the people right. at home. I just always wanted to ask somebody. You're cool as hell. We could just talk. Yeah. What is it? Oh, okay. Let's pretend it's like November 21st or something, because I know the plane tickets are fucking high. <laughs> I looked already for that fucking week, 17, 1100. What the fuck? <laughs> they go to New York. November 12th. All right, November 12th. It's what? August 17th. So we basically got 90 days, right? We got 120 days. Mm -hmm. Let's say they call you with the fight. You fight November 12th. When does training camp usually start? Yeah, you know, this like this last fight with with Brown, I, I trained for fifteen weeks, but I, I had about six weeks. Like, I wanted to get like a good six weeks of training before I even scheduled anything to kind of get it. Right, right, right. I was you know just getting back in routine, and uh, but I yeah, I would say like typically ten weeks is good amount of time for uh, from strategy from like training and all the aspects, but um. Yeah, like like Monday through Friday is t a typical a typical week, and and something extra Saturday. But uh, yeah, each fight is is so different too, because with the opponent, you know, you're you're trying to get guys that mimic that style, or you know, like with Brown, he's like six one or six two, like fucking tall, and that's not very common at one seventy. So you know, I, I had to find some guys that were his height, you know, spar with those kind of guys. So there's a little little bit of homework to do before we even get into that eight ten weeks of training, but uh. It's a, I mean, for me specifically, I like to to do, uh, you know, I'd say at least twelve weeks of training. Some people can do six or eight, but I feel I felt be I feel better the more you know I can bring my weight down a little bit more, get a little bit more of a routine as far as like running and that kind of stuff before we go into like the high intensity. What do you walk around that? Um, usually about one ninety, one ninety five around there. But <clears throat> when I still look light now. Yeah, shit, I'm I'm probably 200 right now. Wow, you look fucking light. Like, damn, 200. Yeah. I better not never get robbed because I can't describe <laughs> the guy's fucking weight. I'm terrible with weight. I think you're no, 180. But, yeah, no, I'm. I mean, it's it's deceptive though because I'm I'm a lean, I'm a I'm a lean guy, but like, yeah, if, when I'm training, I, I try to stay around 185, about 15 over. But I, you know, it's like it takes a little bit of time to get there, you know, before we get into that like high intensity because. Yeah, so if I can do like eight, six to eight weeks of uh, like the aerobic training where we do like the lower heart rate, 150 area for like 45 minutes, you know, three times a week. Like, so I, for me, I, I kind of build the low, the low base and then like the probably four of the last six weeks are like high intensity sprints. Like we do the, I, I uh, work with Nick, Nick Kirsten and he's in, he's in Torrance and fuck that guy's changed the game for me. I mean, I Is never. Is he that good? No, he worked under. The guy from Oakland. Yeah, that his son uh, was the quarterback. Marinovich. Marinovich. Right. Okay. Right, and and so I uh, I was just for me I was just watching some of the stuff that he did with like the the balance you know manipulation and the the foot the feet work, and so I was like, yeah, this, this is interesting. So I kind of was just watching videos online and and was like, this guy you know he seems pretty pretty smart and and did a lot of pool workouts you know 
<clears throat> so I was like, yeah, you know, I'm I'm getting older. I'm not I'm not 20 anymore. These these fucking guys coming up here training MMA when they're like 12, you know. <laughs> but uh, I, I liked his approach as far as what he what he did. So I went down and met him, and and uh, we started doing a little bit of stuff. Kind of got to know him, and, and I I was getting stronger and and noticeably faster you know like he talks about building the kinesthetic awareness like uh, being able to train your nervous system if that makes sense and uh i could see a noticeable difference like within a couple of weeks so i was like wow this this is great and so his like the way he his you know the periodization we would do these fucking i, I would watch uh Rafael dos Anjos do these 110 yard sprints on the football field and i'm like i've never done a 110 yard sprint in my 110 life. 110 yards 110 and I fucking I grew up playing football. I played every sport yeah, there is. I've weird. never I've never ran never. 110 yeah, yards for never. nothing. So, yeah, the, my for the first time I ran, I I was I was fucking toast in inside of a round. I was like, and it was it was the different world. I was like, this is this is crazy. I mean, you know them going to the track three days a week and doing this high intensity, but you know you got to build your way to get to there. Cause right. I, and no, plus no. for me, it was like. It'd be like going to, you know, day one in jiu-jitsu. It's like you're not going to start doing these, you know, flying triangle, flying armbar day one. It's like, yeah, there's some progression there. But, <clears throat> yeah, Nick, he, he fucking, he, he really uh, kind of changed, changed the approach, my approach to, to training, and, uh, and especially in conditioning. So, but it's all the fast twitch. But yeah, he, was, he was big on building the, the foot strength, you know, and uh, just, a, just a smart guy, you know. And he's been doing it 18 years, you know, and a lot of, a lot of guys didn't, don't know his story, but... If you look at his athletes, like you can see the transformation. Like with Dos Anjos, he's worked with him for like three years now, and I mean, I saw him because he was like, you know, he was a good fighter, and then he went to fucking great fighter. Now he's he became the champ, and I was like, well, shit, he's doing something right, you know. So I, I would, it made me more curious on uh, on his training approach. It's so weird how much goes in that the the public doesn't know or even mm -hmm. understand, you know how much work goes in uh, it's fucking crazy i can't even think of it recovery like it's five days two three different things a day you know in football you do two weeks or two a days right in 90 degree weather you run up a few hills after the two weeks is over that's it it's three to five that's <laughs> yeah. it this is fucking crazy now when do you when do most people start to wake up you know i I would say probably six weeks, six weeks from the fight, um, at least, you know, addressing because, mo you know, a lot of guys, and I think that's kind of that, that the whole, the weight differential, that's kind of changed a little bit, I think in the last year more so because, you know, with, with people thinking, um, being heavier where you'd get the, get it, have an advantage, but, you know, strength plays such a little part these days. It's like speed and endurance are, are obviously the biggest things. I think you know in my opinion I think GSP kind of changed the game the way you know you saw him him doing his track workouts him doing everything but uh it was all like had to come down to endurance cuz like okay guys even if they could keep keep up with him for a round you know by the third round you're 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 toast he's he's, he's, he's going to he's going to do what he wants so you know I think the evolution of the sports changed and, and now guys becoming fucking faster and quicker and having better uh you know, better better coordination and, and just uh, you know coming down to endurance. I mean, you look at the the McGregor the first fight with with Diaz and he he was doing good doing work in the first round and gets gets tired and that's like you know that that's a different weight class and and uh, it shows you the endurance. You know, Diaz those guys are known for their endurance and I think it's it is it's a huge you know that's one thing. Even going into the Matt Brown fight is like well shit. They're like if you hurt him, you know don't don't sit here and. and sprint for for a minute trying to finish him because he's you know you, you know how tough he is and he's he's no, he, like he's known for holding on for hanging in there and, and catching up and end up getting you know getting guys in the late round but you know for me i mean that was that was approach i kind of took they're like because they're like we know you're probably going to hurt him like this is Rafael cordero like you're going to hurt him but don't don't waste all of your fucking energy trying to try to just just try to finish him because he'll come back so it's kind of i had to be a little more Take a step back, be a little more intelligent on on, on that fight. Now, before all these fights, you train every discipline like Muay Thai, Jiu Jitsu. You wrestle a few days a week. Mm -hmm. You know, you spar a few days a week. You ba pretty basically. I mean, that's what's always fucked with me. Like you have so many different disciplines 
to draw so, some mm -hmm. people train with the gi some people say I ain't gonna train with a fucking gi they ain't nobody in, in the MMA <laughs> with a gi you know right. everybody has different fucking things and that's what I respect I respect the hard work you know just the strength and conditioning fucking how it would kill me three days a week never mind boxing and mm -hmm. fucking mm -hmm. jumping on boxes and, you know <laughs> yeah. and then your diet and you know it's just it's and it's not just strength and conditioning. It's like going full out because you're like you can't like half ass. That's mm -hmm. not the reason. And the whole time you got to be careful that you don't get hurt. Yeah. Did you see right, fucking right. Cerrone doing that wave runner thing? I'm yeah. like he's gonna fucking kill himself before his fight. <laughs> but I had a question. What's the best part about a, a training camp? Because like obviously like it must suck. At least part of it must be tough. But like what's the best part? Honestly, I look forward to going to sleep. Like it's, it's seriously is is fucking <laughs> as stupid as that sounds. Like I really look forward to like a good night's sleep because like that's where you you get a good night's sleep. That's where you recover. I mean, and fuck. I mean the worst like the worst part. I mean I you know the skills and stuff is is fun. I you know, I like I like wrestling, jujitsu. It's it's like it's enjoyable. But like the, when you start doing the track workouts and the conditioning, that's like the fucking most unenjoyable part. And you know sparring is usually fun too. So it's like. You can find some enjoyment in most of it, but you get so, you know, your body, you get so, it's so fucking taxing. I, I literally look forward to going to sleep. I don't blame you. I, <laughs> I look forward to going to sleep, and I don't do all that stuff. But, <laughs> but it's, um, do you ever, like, what is it? Have you, I, I, I'm, uh, and I apologize. I just don't, I haven't followed your, I haven't only followed the UFC for a few years. Have you, did you ever have to pull out of a fight for, before, for an injury at the end of a training camp? I did one time. What is that um, like? That must suck. Yeah, it was, you know, it's just one of those things, just, it is what it is, you know, it's, you don't plan ever to get hurt, but shit happens, I mean, I actually, uh, had a, tore my hamstring, Oof. and, uh, yeah, it was one of those weird fucking things, I just, like, slipped weird, and, like, like, I, you know, it was after training, so the fucking mat's completely covered, and this was at King's, and, uh, I had slipped weird and, like, felt a little pop, and I knew it just, it felt weird. And I was like, I gotta get this checked out. And like, yeah, you got a partial tear in your semi-membranosis. And I was like, oh, fuck. I don't know what that is, but <laughs> all right. That doesn't sound good. <laughs> it is, uh, how long have you been in the UFC? Ten, it's amazing how long you've been in the league. Like 2009. You, wow. It was my first fight against uh, Carlos Condit. No shit. Yeah, and, and. It was one of those things too. It was a two like two week notice fight, and again one of those I got nothing to lose. Well, fuck yeah, I'll, I'll you know. And and he had they had just the UFC just acquired the WEC, and Condit came into the UFC and he lost his first fight by like split decision to Martin Campman, and so then his it's next Nashville. fight was Chris Lytle. He got hurt, and so then they like my manager was like, hey, we you know do you want to take this fight? Like, of course. So I was basically brought in to be the guy to get beat up or give Carlos Condit a win, you know? It, and it ended up being, like, one of the top top 30 best fights of all time. And we had a fucking... Like, I I, I, I dropped him, like, three different times. It was a good fight. I mean, I, I definitely got tired. Like, between this... I've never been so tired between... <laughs> I, I, I had, you know, two weeks of training, but between the second and the third round, I was fucking... I remember exactly how I felt I was like I don't know how the fuck I don't know how I'm gonna finish this 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 fight I don't know how I'm gonna I, I can barely breathe it felt like I was breathing through a fucking coffee stir I was like I couldn't even see but I, I was I had get you know I, I'd given the first round giving him hell and the second round was close and then the third round he definitely won but again one of those things it was like nothing to lose let's do it but I, I, if you haven't seen that you should you should go back and watch it the first round is it's cr it's a crazy first round. I, I kind of <laughs> sort of remember it. I kind of <laughs> sort of remember because I remember when he came in against Campman on a Wednesday night. It was like a yeah. a special fight night, and then right. when he fought again, he you know that's like I said, you've had some fucking brawls, man. So <laughs> and you know, listen, here's the beauty about the UFC. Here's the beauty about comedy. Here's the beauty about if you play the fucking tuba. Here's the beauty about <laughs> if you play the fucking guitar in a band. You know. They were supposed to cancel Seinfeld after the first year. Sometimes, man, it takes some people a little longer to catch on mm -hmm. than others. Nothing wrong with that. 
Nate's been lurking for fucking, right? right. For nine right. years, Nate was lurking. And watch Michael Johnson, Connor, and now he's walking around with his fucking dick out, and they're giving him checks. <laughs> swinging his dick. Yeah, swinging yeah. his dick. <laughs> and it's like I always say, just keep showing up. Right. There's going to be fucking bad ones, and there's going to be good ones. What do you think? Every time I go on stage, it's a fucking masterpiece. It's a disaster. <laughs> it's a disaster right. five out of ten fucking times. <laughs> but I know that going in. Yeah. But every once in a while, the sound system's great. Mama sucked your dick. She gave you a nice steak. The hotel's good. The weather's nice. You saw some good friends. Yeah. And all the stars get aligned, man. And once the stars get aligned, you've done your training. You already popped your elbow. Mm -hmm. You already got knocked out. You already got submitted. You already done it all. So now that comes, you look at yourself in the mirror one day, you know, I got three good fucking years. I want to fucking mope around the unemployment line. Right. Or I want to bit slap motherfuckers and get what's coming to me. I've been doing this for 10 fucking years. Exactly. And that's what happens. And one day it all comes fucking together. And, you know, and that's what it looked like for me, for you. Mm -hmm. I saw you those three fights. And I remember like that third fight when you lost, you looked a little... Like, you couldn't even believe what was going on in your life. Right. But you found the fucking home, man. Mm -hmm. You found the home down there. You got back in your stride. All the stars were aligned, and there's Matt Brown. And the next one and the next one after that, whoever they lined up against you. Because right. you found the home. You have a fucking home. You're not a fucking orphan no more. Hanging mm -hmm. on Glendale and fucking yeah, I know. driving to Redondo <laughs> Beach and then fucking hiking. To the, I got to learn jiu-jitsu in Las Vegas. Listen, this is one-stop shopping. Yeah. The least time you have, you know, you can do everything, uh, which you probably do. Yeah, because Nick Kirsten's mm -hmm. over at King's mm -hmm. pretty much, right? Yep. So all the only person that's got to show up is the acupuncturist. That's the only other ride you got to get then maybe to go freeze your fucking shoulder like Joe Rogan somewhere. <laughs> That's it. Yeah. You got one sub shopping at Cordero. Yeah. You know, they tape you there, blah, 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 blah. Right. It's, uh, you found the home, man. And it's no looking back from there. That's it. Yeah. You take your humps and your fucking bumps. A hooker sucks a thousand dicks and all of a sudden one day, she's a madam. You know what I'm saying? She's running the joint now. She's missing a foot. You know what I'm saying? But she's running the joint. She's yeah. getting ten percent. She's got thirty chick sucking dick for her. You're so inspirational, Joy. To because everybody. the dog. I gotta drop it like it is. You Even know. hookers, you like people are at home going, Joy. But I'm a hooker. Well, let me tell you what happens to you. All right. Next thing you know, you end up in North Hollywood with a little Chinese massage parlor, with Scott's tape on your eyes, like the fucking Mexicans that fucking Benny Hanna. You ever go to Benihana? There's no more Japanese people <laughs> left. They abandoned ship. They don't, to, they don't want to do it no more. I don't want to work at Benihana, Mom. I want to be a math major. <laughs> Unfucking believable. Mm. I sat, I sat in a hotel. I sat in a hospital for two fucking days. Tubes up my nose. I got a cloudy fucking nose again. I suffered for four weeks. Everything was working out. Now I'm back to being stuffed up again. Really? Two fucking straws they put up my nose with stitches. Oh, yeah. Jesus Christ. I've gotten a, a septoplasty on my it, fucking worst operation ever. Well, yeah. That's when they put the straw up there? Yeah, the like the plastic tubes they sew in there. Yeah, they uh, sew it in there for the love of Christ. I was miserable for like two months. Really? Yeah. yeah. I've been okay. I've been breathing. I mean, it's not as bad as it was. I'm breathing. I'm not fucking... I'm getting that black gas out of me. That's mm -hmm. the killer. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you don't breathe. That's what happened, dog. For years, I wouldn't fucking exhale. I'd just be grasping. So that black air just sits in your stomach. Nothing fucking moves. You get stuck. You need to see the acupuncturist. <laughs> and that's it. Fuck. I was listening to... Uh when you had Dr. Belize, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's fucking awesome. Now, did you go see her also? No, I haven't. I, 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 I got the book. Like, I wanna, I wanna reach out to her, but uh, I, I heard her on your show both a couple of times, and she seems great, though. You know, man, she's she's onto something. She really is onto something. There's something about it. Because I asked a couple of jujitsu guys, like Einstein the other day, and mm -hmm. Einstein goes, "Guess what I do now?" She goes, "He goes, I do the exercises at the end of my workout." And I get back on the mat. It's amazing. It clears everything. She has different breathing for different things, you know, mm -hmm. in the book. Mm -hmm. She's really interesting. That She's is. on to something. Right. She's on to something, you know. And, yeah. Uh, it's, it's uh, you know, you, you, you have to pull from everywhere, especially when you're a professional like yourself. You have to right. read from everywhere. You don't mm -hmm. know. One little thing might help you more than anything, you know. Yeah. That's a f that whole world's like fascinating to me. I and it's growing. Look what you said about. Yeah. Listen, it's not no more fucking jump on the table ten times, right. do ten behind the neck presses at one eighty five, push that, 
they got it down to a fucking science now. Mm-hmm. These kids are going to school. And now they go to work for somebody else who's got a different science. So they mix the sciences. Pretty mix, you're like fucking Bruce Lee. Yeah. You put together your own health Jeet Kune Do. They know everything. Right. You know, over at Alberto's, they got that technical fitness. Same fucking thing. Yeah. You know, your hips, your arms, you swing them around with a fucking bat. When I first got to Alberto's, I couldn't put my arms up. I take the bat and I swing it around your fucking head and back and forth. And it's, they say it's the smart. We're growing now. That's it. Yeah. Jump, Jack Willane's dead. <laughs> it's over. No more fucking jumping jacks. <laughs> yeah, We're exactly. on to new fucking things. That's it. This is the future, mm-hmm. man. They put fucking heart monitors on you. Mm-hmm. They put stuff. You know, it wasn't uh, Junior taking blood after every fucking workout and they could see what's in your blood with the oxygen. Right. We're on to different levels, man. Well, how do you decide what to, what, what to do? Because there's so many options like you some, try but, everything but, but some of them must be crazy some of them must like be bad for you like aren't, how do you how do you filter all that stuff yeah i mean like you know ex- experiment try it out just it's, try you do do you just try everything well you know credible credible source i guess but uh i had a buddy who's a professor down at cal state fullerton and he uh i would talk to him about just different aerobic like how to how do i train smarter breathe better like because that whole breathing game was fucking foreign to me it's like trying to learn chinese like but he's like when you're you know you see these runners and they exhale they work on the they're focused on their exhale because he was like the faster you can push the carbon out you know the it's not about the inhale it's about the exhale, the exhale. and i was and i was like what like the, how the fuck and i'm i just finding this out right now but it, it was fascinating so which when i listened to dr belize i was like man she you know i got her book and then and read the book and i was like wow this is this is fucking great. Like, I want to learn more. You know, it's it can only help. Dr. Belize, you know where I saw you at Higgins? Uh-huh. They teach the stem of that. Okay. And that guy will change right. your breathing around. He's like Dr. Belize. It would be interesting to get all three of them together. And then there's somebody else that does something with that. So it's Belize, Sistema, and there's somebody else. Like what uh, Hickson talked about in his mm-hmm. documentary. Mm-hmm. There's that, uh, what's that, that style of yoga, I forget what it is, where yeah, the guy has I the know ground what you're and about. shit. Mm-hmm. That one, the Breath of Fire, they have it on Santa Monica, Denny Proctopus goes there, like Denny does a lot of yoga, but a lot of breathing for his jujitsu, and he mixes it with kettlebells, and then he does jujitsu, that works for him. Right. You know, the breathing, but, oh, and technical fitness, see, what they talk about is the exhale. Focus on the exhale, mm-hmm. the exhale, because if the... The more you push the exhale out, the cleaner air go in. So that's right. what they always talk about. So yeah, it's uh, that even that, you know, for two thousand years they've been going, <laughs> you know, yeah. God knows how much that's fucking changed. <clears throat> Who was it a couple of weeks ago? Every time Chief, oh, Holly Holmes, ah, right, ah, <laughs> yeah, hey, 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 I know. <laughs> <laughs> there's some to it though. Yeah, there's some, uh, uh, it's, uh, whatever works. Serena for you. Williams has been doing it for years. Well, she's Same black. Way. She's been yelling at everybody for fucking years. You know what I'm saying? She just hits the fuck out. Ah, you fucking cocksucker. Take that, you fuck. <laughs> no word on you. So you're still training now? Or you're, are you, uh, what do they say, suspended for 60 days? No. Well, not uh, medically suspended, I'm sorry. Yeah, not suspended. Not, I mean, they usually for like 10 days or something. But uh, yeah, I've, I've been kind of a couple days a week. Not nothing. I was, I was traveling. I was in Omaha for a couple weeks and then... But yeah, getting getting back into it, you know, a couple of days a week, take a few days off if you need it. So, but yeah, next week I'll start training. I got a, a few buddies of mine fighting. Um, I would actually Benny Benil Darush and, and those they're both fighting in Mexico City, so they're getting ready for that. So you know, does that help fight? those guys. Um, October, November, something like in Mexico City. You know, the elevation. Who's Dos Anjos fighting down there? Um, Tony Ferguson. Oh my God, that's, that's gonna be a one. fight. That's a good one. All those one fifty fives get me fucking crazy. That one fifty that's a another hellhole of that death. That division's you, fucking insane. One fifty five and one seventy, you're mingling in some weird waters there. <laughs> right. You know, one forty five, you got Aldo, you got the other guy, you got the blonde guy, you got a couple guys, but one fifty five, those first five guys, right. if they ever got together, <laughs> like those five guys just said, Fuck it, fuck this UFC shit. We just want to go from town to town and beat people the fuck up. <laughs> it would be monstrous. Like, you know, 
the Russian with the fucking hat would throw you out a window. <laughs> Once you landed, fucking the Brazilian would be kicking you like a soccer ball. <laughs> then they'll just get Alvarez to come over and headbutt you and hit you with an elbow. I mean, yeah. that fucking 155 is crazy. Insane. Even that other, that other, I'll tell you what's another good fight that's coming up. Michael Johnson against <laughs> Dustin Poirier. That's a good fight. That's a good fucking fight right there, my friends. This I like those kind of. That's what yeah. I like. I can't take those big fucking things no more. Then everybody's testing. Nobody knows what's going on. <laughs> All the, that's the kiss of death. Those top two, they're always in trouble. Right. You want to be like the second fight on the card. Get a check. Go home. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Watch the, while they have the, while they're fighting while the fucking main card, mm -hmm. that's it. They already, they already pissed you in a bottle. You're fucking up in the stands doing heroin, drinking <laughs> whiskey, <laughs> fucking yelling and screaming at fucking what's his name? What's a uh, what's the guy in the middle with the tuxedo? Jimmy, Bruce Buffer. Bruce Buffer. Buffer. Yeah. yeah, that's the card. I would never want to fight him. Now listen. Listen, Dan, I want the second fight. I got shit to do. I got to get my dick sucked. I got to mingle through the crowd. I can imagine. Dog, listen, you fight, the, you fight the second card, you knock a motherfucker out. You just get a tuxedo with no pants, and you just walk through fucking the arena after that. You know what I'm saying? Yum yums for a week. <laughs> I would always, I would always, I'm like, put me first. I'll be first yeah. fight of the night. I'm at 2 o'clock. Oh, my God. 2 o'clock. If I had to wait there all night to fight somebody, I'd have a nervous breakdown. <laughs> like 9.45, I got to fight. I've been mm. up since 6.15. You know what that's like? Oh, fuck. I've been up since 6.15 in the fucking morning. I got to fight at 9.45 at night. I yeah. have a heart attack by 4. Right. That's a fucking nightmare. Listen, Dana. You know that card you got for fucking Q4, that other channel? <laughs> Put me on that fucking fight. 2.30, no Rogan, no nobody. Right. Just uh. Just send somebody. I don't give it, a fuck. Yeah, we'll do, do it you on need, YouTube. Yeah, we'll do it on YouTube. 4 I, don't need, I don't need this. Act. You know yeah. what? Fuck it. You don't have to film it. Fuck, fuck it. you. I got to wait till 10 to fight somebody. Are you fucking nuts? Yeah. If That's you, a dilemma I got now. Listen, when, you, when you're a young comic and you're 30 and somebody looks at you and goes, and you call in for spots at the comedy <laughs> store and they tell you on the phone like like nothing. Yeah, your spots at 1245. <laughs> okay, twelve forty-five Tuesday, twelve one p.m. one a.m. Thursday, and you're like, okay, you have no idea what that's like. That means you have to fill your schedule. That's what makes you a really good comic because now you're like, okay, I can sit at home with Mama till midnight and bore myself to pieces, or I could just start the night out at eight, right, and go to a Mexican room down in fucking Orange County, and then shoot up and do the ice house and pick up 75 bucks mm -hmm. and then do the 1130 at the fucking Laugh Factory and then go to the com lock comedy store and by that time they're running late. So you got an hour away, you talk to your buddies, mm -hmm. but you already made a little money plus you did four or five sets. I could never imagine like fucking fighting at 10 o'clock at night. I'm either the second fight or maybe third <laughs> if you throw me a little bonus, Dana White. Yeah. Just throw me a little something. Cash, right when I get off, right there in the room waiting for me. You'd have the 6 p.m. flight back to L.A. If you were the fighter, you'd be like, Dana, I have a 6 p.m. flight. I don't have oh, yeah, Dana. I'm going back to Burbank. Yeah, I'm on the red eye. The Burbank, 1110. I can't be waiting around for press conferences. I'll call it in. Let me yeah. go home. Let me go home. I don't want to sit here and sit across I'll do 130. Street. I'll do 130. Yeah, no, I, I don't know how they do that. Sometimes when I see that shit, I'm like, how do they yeah. Do that all day. Some of those fights in Brazil, sometimes like two thirty in the morning, <sighs> and I like because when I fought in Atlanta, we didn't go out till eleven. My fight was like eleven thirty at night, and so I was like, I bring a fucking pillow to the locker room. I start. I went to sleep when I got there. I was like, I'm not gonna sit here in anxiety over fucking waiting. You know, it's like I went to sleep and then wake me up an hour before the fight and warm up. So, wake me up before you go go. Yeah. <laughs> Wake me up before you go, go. There's no reason to have me here wasting time. Yeah. Dog, the first time I did a movie, you know, I moved to L.A. I didn't know nothing about nothing. Nothing about I didn't know nothing about movies. I watch movies. I'll pay. That's my favorite movie right there. The outlaw Josie Wheels. Look at him. He's fucking beautiful. He's fucking <laughs> beautiful. Look at that savage. Where is he today? Fucking at Starbucks eating a fucking macchino. We don't even have an outlaw Josie Wales in 2016. Fifty fucking years ago, we had an outlaw Josie Wales. Look at him killing everybody, Indians, white people, Mexicans. He didn't give a fuck, and nobody, nobody said nothing to him. Nobody tweeted. You know, <laughs> Ellen Generis says one fucking black thing. Everybody gets mad. Like, he's shooting every fucking nationality. Nobody was saying nothing to Clint Eastwood. Nothing. How the fuck we get on that tour? <laughs> it's so. It, that was what happened with jujitsu at first. I'd go at eight o'clock at night. 
eight o'clock at night is not a good time for Uncle Joey. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> By that time, there's been a lot of chemicals, a lot of reefer smoked. My yeah. anxiety levels would be high. I'd have food in my right. stomach. Every time I went to jujitsu, I thought I was going to die. I finally one day I said, "Fuck it." There's an 11 a.m. class somewhere, and that gets it out of the way. I get a little anxiety about 9:45. I pop a little baby aspirin, mm -hmm. I drink a little fucking energy drink, and I shoot down there like a fucking, like a guy in an electric chair. I'm going to die anyway. I might as well die in Alberto's fucking cage over <laughs> yeah. there. That's the real truth. For the first year in jiu-jitsu, I would hug the cats. I would have a will. You know what I'm saying? I thought I, was, I would be fucking panicking. I would be panicking. But that's what got my dick hard, that for years I hadn't panicked. I hadn't panicked in years. We live in this fucking beautiful world. When I was 21, I used to panic every fucking night. I'd throw a window, throw a rock, and get chased, <laughs> rob somebody's fucking coke. You do something, your heart beats. I, my heart don't beat no more. So I kind of like that panic stage. You know, I hadn't panicked like that in a while. Mm -hmm. Now I get it over with. By 1 o'clock, I ain't panicking. I'm ready to stab a motherfucker in the heart. You follow me? <laughs> Once I walk out of jiu-jitsu, who's going to stop me? Who's going to stop me? What are you going to say to me? <laughs> Pull over? What are you fucking crazy? <laughs> I just got, I was, I was on the bottom end of a fucking triple choke. People ask me what my best submission is, getting choked. That's <laughs> me. I go to get choked. I even told the guy yesterday, I'm American and he fucking choked me. I got bad shoulders. <laughs> you got to do what you got to do. I got to imagine, because <clears throat> fucking, I love going to comedy shows, but there's got to be some fucking anxiety. Are I mean. you fucking, anxiety is my middle name, <laughs> I wear underwear so I don't pee through my pants. Are you fucking kidding me? Anxiety. To, but see, it's like controlled anxiety. I can't imagine. Okay, I can imagine sitting in the locker room and watching the other fights and hitting the pads and giggling and shit. I can dig that. That's, I'm tremendous at that. That's my fucking world. I can hit pads and crack jokes and mm. do Rocky Balboas and everything. <laughs> That walk to the cage would not be a good situation for me. Some, again, I watch you guys mm -hmm. and I go, what would I feel like right now? And that's terror. Mm -hmm. That's terror. Once I touch that mat and I'd walk up those stairs, instead of doing that little dance, I'd just be breathing heavy. My breathing would be out of fucking control by that point. I'd be hyperventilating without even doing nothing. By the time he was searching me, by the time they're searching my underarms and all that <laughs> yeah. shit, I'm fucking, I'm getting anxiety. They would even stop the fight. They would sit me down and give me oxygen because as the guy would be touching me, my heart would be beating that much in my chest. Mm -hmm. I can't take that type of shit. Listen, I love, I love smoking pot. And I don't mind having a fucking beer. Do you know why I don't have a beer when I go out and do comedy or bring weed with me? I don't do good with cops around me. So... To not have any nonsense, mm -hmm. I don't drink and drive. Why take the chance? To where you're drinking, yes, a beer. I'm going to come out now on that line. I can't walk that line. Even if I'm straight, right. I'll fall apart. So now I got beef. Now. now I got beef because I can't handle that type of shit. But I know that going in. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, that's why I, can, I don't know how the hell you guys do it. I get anxiety not on the drive down to the comedy store. Not when I get out of the car. Not when I fucking get my water from the bartender and say some stupid remarks. Not when I... It's when I walk up the stairs to the comedy store. That little three stairs. Mm -hmm. Three fucking stairs. <laughs> Grown men. Three stairs. By the time I get to that top stair, the room drops. It's like I got vertigo. And I'm like, oh shit, we got a problem. And he's got the light. That means he can get off at any fucking time. I'm trying to catch my breath. You mean to tell me I got to walk 15 more steps to that stage? I can't even stand. I got to go sit down. That's how bad the anxiety gets for me. Like, that's how bad. But once your foot touches that fucking stage and my hand touches that microphone, it's like getting punched for a fighter. Mm -hmm. It has to be the same. Once I hit that microphone and I ask them, what the fuck's up, motherfuckers? <laughs> done. Anxiety's done. It's that... Four, four minutes. That's hell. It's hell, Jake. <laughs> What's your anxiety like? What? What? How does it develop for you? Where's it peak? Yeah, that's. I would say the walkout's always the worst because everything, 
it, it, it's funny because I'm surprised to hear you guys say that. That's not what I. You ever see Apocalypse was. Now when they land the first time and the kid's like, "I don't want to go, I don't want to go." <laughs> Remember that dog? Remember that? He's like, "I don't want to go," and then I like, get the fuck out there, cocksucker. That's me. I would, <laughs> I would hit the front thing of the fucking walk, and I would go. I don't want to go. That's it. Cordero, go without me. They'd have to rip my Adidas. What is it? Nike. They'd have <laughs> to rip Bach? my Cherie yeah. Bach. They'd be ripping it. Come back, Joey. Come back, fuck you. You're fighting him. Get the fuck off me. So the the walk. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's you know what? It's funny because I I've, I've had 16 fights in the UFC, and it you think it would get easier, but it doesn't. And I mean, you can deal with it. Like, you just learn to deal with it. But the walk is always the same. Like, I never have a problem going to the arena in the back room. I fucking, we crack jokes. You know, keep it light. It's fucking easy. You know, the back room's I have my buddy back there with turkey sandwiches, talking yeah. about the eighth grade, getting my dick sucked behind the <laughs> church. <laughs> Look at me. You're going to knock him out, Joey. I'm a fucking bad motherfucker. Yeah. I'm unstoppable. I eat my carrots. Oh, that, that <laughs> whole, I'm there. That whole ego thing is me. It's that fucking walk to the thing mm-hmm. would kill me. So mm-hmm. I, I'm loving that you're yeah. telling me this shit. It's that. That's that's it. Because it's funny. I I been working with this. He's a sports psychiatrist down in San Diego, and uh, his dog name's Doctor Larden, and he's fucking brilliant. But he always talks about stay in your bubble. You know what I mean? And and I didn't really understand what that meant. Like, what the fuck? What does that even mean? But he would be like, you know, you're here to do one thing. You're not here to fucking be on Twitter, you know, social media, you're not here to do any of that bullshit, like, because it's so easy to get caught up in that fucking, you know, that celebrity kind of bubble, but he's like, you're here for one reason, so that kind of helped reinforce me, but yeah, I don't get, I don't get, I don't get uh, anxiety in the back, you know, warming up, it's smooth, we're cracking jokes, keeping it light, and it's only just from that, from the locker room to in the octagon, that's, that's it, that's the only time where you're like, your heart rate's high, you know, people are fucking screaming, you know, want to, want to, want to throw chairs over there, you know, but, for me, it's just like I'm not I'm not looking at anybody. I'm not even looking at the fucking camera. I'm going in there, and it's. But that's yeah, that's really the only time you know. Once the, once the fight starts, you're just moving. You're you're already going. Just like when you you know you grab the mic, it's like, let's fucking do it. Let's go. Okay, so once they search me, I'm as, how's your anxiety when they search you? Uh, they check the mouthpiece. You hug your yeah. coaches. Right. Right, it's, right there, that last coach. I just hung on to him as hard as I can. I'd say, Coach, I don't want to do this. <laughs> Like I did, yeah. coach, don't make me do that. Like I really would. I'd have to hear him say to me, Joe, you're gonna be fine. You do come on. Mm-hmm. I know you since you're fucking eight. You're gonna be fine. You, right. you might not beat him, you're a bum. But you're gonna do fine. Just cover your face. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. Like I would know what to do. Once I walk up, what do I feel like? It's, Once I'm in my corner there, what do I feel like? I mean it's it's definitely intense, but I feel like like when I look at my coaches, it's like they look me in the eye and it's it's confidence, you know what I mean? They're like we're here because we fucking believe in you. You know what I mean? And it's just like, let's, you know, been here as far as preparation. We've done fucking 20, you know, 2,900 fucking rounds. So it's like, we're doing three rounds. You just got three rounds. That's all it is. So then, you you know, it's, it's, and for me, it's always been, I'm my own worst enemy. If I start thinking about this shit and this fucking, and, you know, but like I said, that when I started working with Dr. Larden, he kind of cleared a lot of that overthinking, overanalyzing. Just that's that part of the brain that fucking too much. He kind of kicked that out. So it was just like keeping it simple, you know, um, and just staying in, staying in the bubble. I mean, but it, it's definitely a little anxiety. I would say just on the walk, I'd probably be more like anxiety than when you stop. So. Once you stop, all right, fucking rip it off. You just want to, you know, some guys just run to the fucking octagon and rip their shit off. Let's just want to get, get the walk the, over. That, you know would what be, I mean? that would be the, the only way I could do it if I just ran to the fucking octagon, <laughs> sprinted balls out to the octagon, stopped and had him. Like when I go give blood, that's mm-hmm. my fucking hatred right there. But I've already figured out a way. I looked the other way. I put an iPod on. I listened to Santana, the same fucking song. <laughs> And in a way, I'm just giving him my arm. Like, I just give him my arm and look the other way, and I feel it a little bit. This last time, it was fucked up. They couldn't find the fucking vein, so it hurt a little bit. They had to stab me like four uh, times. Fuck. I hate all that shit. Like, I can't deal with that stuff, but I go to acupuncture because I don't want to overcome my fear. That's a horrible fucking fear to have. Mm-hmm. You can't get the fucking... I would go to the doctor's office and mm-hmm. dodge and go around the corner and say I didn't feel like getting a needle. One time I went down and did the checkup and ran out before the blood test. 
they were calling my house. <laughs> and they're like, what the fuck happened to you? I don't like blood tests, man. Mm-hmm. I got to go get a shingle shot. It's killing me because I know it's going to hurt. It's in the fucking shoulder. <sighs> that means I faint. <laughs> that means I faint. I can feel the serum going into my fucking arm. You understand me? That means I go down. You're thinking about a right hook. <laughs> What's that? You're thinking about throwing a right hook, hit the nurse. In the oh, house. no, no. Oh, it's terrible. I had my, my childhood doctor. Because I didn't like needles either, so I, I would always tell her to like tell me when she was getting, like give me like a countdown. And she just tried to do it, so I smacked her and she stabbed herself with the needle. No, she did not. Mm-hmm. Wow, Doctor Nathan. You know, you know what's actually even worse. Shut up. Like I, I've never liked needles, but no. you just fucking deal with it. But like my son, he just turned one, and I hate watching him get fucking vaccines. I don't go. I, I fucking choke hate the it. Doctor. You <laughs> I the oh yeah, doctor. like oh my god, you get pissed at the doctor. You gotta restrain yourself. Right, you can you can fucking stab me with a pool cue, but like watching my son, you know, you put him down and then they fucking poke him with a little needle and, they, and then he starts. He looks at you like, what the? Why the fuck am I getting? You know what I mean? Oh, like it's, it's your terrible. fault, and it's, that's the worst. That gives me anxiety. I'm getting anxiety. <laughs> the worst you want, fucking feeling ever. You want him to give me mouth to mouth? I'm all <laughs> fucked up right now. And shit. <laughs> you really would like want to assault the doctor? Huh? You really, like you'd freak out at the doctor. I've always, listen, I've just told the doctors the truth, that I have a phobia. When I walk into a doctor's office and they check my blood pressure, they go, what's going on with you? And they know. I got white <laughs> coat fucking whatever the fuck. And they give me 15 minutes. And they talk to me. Then they come back and my blood pressure is fucking perfect. I just don't like it. Mm-hmm. Just since mm-hmm. I was a kid, I just don't fucking like right. it. This guy has been my doctor for 16 years, 17 years. So I started to like him about 10 years ago. He's great. <laughs> He's a great guy. You yeah. know? So now I don't mind if he, the chicks that take the blood out, I have a relationship with them. You know, how you doing? What's going on? How yeah. you been? How's your daughter? That type of shit. So I just give him the arm now, you know? But I, 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 I couldn't even fucking. Now, let me ask you one last question about this fear shit. Wake up in the morning on the morning of fight night. Mm-hmm. A little brutal in the morning, that morning, maybe three minutes of, what the fuck am I doing with my life? I'm fighting tonight. <laughs> nah, not so much. I mean, it's more, uh, yeah, like I said, I, I really don't have any any issues, in, like any anxiety, I should say, until, until you, st- you tell you they're fucking, all right, Ellen Burger, get on the X, you know, the camera's right there. Like, until you do that, I really, it's all pretty manageable. But, you know, everybody, everybody's different. I, I know guys that fucking... You can't even talk to you on fight day. Like, they'll fucking freak out or they'll be throwing up in the trash can. But, you know, everybody's different, you know. I, I Like I said, I, I really, I'm pretty decent until the walkout. You got to just fucking let's do it. Let's go. It's almost like you you, you don't want to, there's too much fucking wasted time, you know, too much waiting. You're just like, well, let's just, let's do it. I'll just, I'll just run. I'm just going to sprint now. <laughs> I get, I get. Even if it's a little gig, I get a little anxiety in the morning of, like, what the fuck am I going to say? I don't really want to do this shit no more. I should just quit and start selling fucking cars. What the fuck am I going to a bar for? And do? I mean, I really go through it. Really? Yeah, for about eight, nine minutes. And then I come to my senses. And I say I'm the luckiest fucking guy in the world. You know, I got That's a great awesome. job. Yeah. And I get to go down there and fuck around on stage. And then... Everything sort of works out, but no, 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 I get it terrible, and that's great that you broke it down, because I've never really asked a fighter before, like game day, weekday, the week they announced the fight to you, and you get a little anxiety on the phone. I mean, I don't even think about it. If somebody call, Like I said, that'd be great till they called my name to run down the fucking cage, and once I got in the cage, I'd hyperventilate myself and tap myself out, I think. Bruce Buffett, come on, what happened? I just tapped myself out, dog. I can't. My lungs are going too much. Let me give some shout outs and we'll get the fuck out of here before track and track hits. Big Thumb Terry, John Cutler, my girl Cleo, one by one podcast. Ookie Spooky will be seeing you in Austin on the 15th of September. Jeff Cordero, Bob Lalingus, Rob Keys, and my man Matt Baker up there at Matt Baker BJJ. Putting it motherfucking together. What do you got planned for the weekend, Lee? What I got for the weekend? Um, I don't. I think I'm gonna go see that Suicide Squad movie. Don't do it. Don't do it. It's don't terrible. Do it. People saying it's bad. 
I don't know. I don't fucking know. Do I look like a movie critic to you? I'm just... <laughs> I, no, I, I honestly haven't thought towards the weekend yet. What night is date night this week? Uh, probably Saturday. Saturday. Because we're going to the Ice House Friday. We are. You coming with me? Absolutely. All right. I'm happy you're coming up and shit. I, I felt bad about what happened to you late. It wasn't... Because, uh... you know, I've done acid before. But... It affected me for a little while, but it didn't get me. Once I got the air and shit, I was back to normal. I would skip Luke Magoo. I, I would have been fine. I think the second dose was what sent me over the top. Uh, and then then I got sick. And But thank you for taking care of me. Oh, I can't leave you here like an animal. We've all gotten sick at one time or another. Somebody's always taking care of us. Yeah. Lee just laid down on the couch and went nappy doing it. I called him in the morning. He said he got a pizza and some wings at 5 to 2. Yeah, because I was like, I can't. All right. Because the last time I tried, this happened. I didn't, get, I didn't get that messed up, but I tried to take an Uber home, and it was too scary. <laughs> so I was like, I, I don't know if I could handle looking at someone yet, because it was like... Like you, you can see the video. Like I was shaking. Like it was, it was like a weird. It was a great. It was fun, but it was like a w- intense experience. I didn't know if I could handle being in a car with someone, so I decided to order pizza. And and then like I, that, that was kind of cool, a little scary. And then and then I and then but then I had the best Lyft driver. He was like a forty year old black dude with a purple car playing like old R and B music. It was awesome. What did he charge you? Like three bucks. It's right. awesome. So now you went over the lift. You're a fucking communist, you know? <laughs> First you're hanging out with Uber, and now you go over the lift. You're like a fucking, you're worse than America. <laughs> One week when they're jumping up and down with Bernie Sanders, <laughs> then they hate him all of a sudden. Now they're in bed with Hillary. But Bernie Sanders is done, you fucks. <laughs> no he one done. likes Hillary. No, but th- then why did you fucking get off the Bernie Sanders vote? Get a petition going. Let's revote this bitch. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Everybody just tapped out one day, like fuck it. We don't, uh, <laughs> you know, we don't care. Oh, uh, we'll jump on Hillary's dick now. What the fuck is wrong with America? You just don't give up on your fucking people like that. But you do now. This is the millennials. You fucks, <laughs> ruining <Sure>. shit. <laughs> they even gave themselves a name, the millennials. Look, ruining shit. <laughs> ruining shit. This fucking around, fun. going to places with tight jeans on and shit. <laughs> Meanwhile, they're closing fucking restaurants that matter. What's closing now this week? Like uh, fucking Steak and Shake or something like that? I think TGI Fridays are closing Oh, they now. deserve to close down those fucking things. <laughs> They've had the same boring-ass fucking menu since 88. One of those places. <laughs> onion rings and shit. Who still has onion rings on their fucking menu? It's 2016. It's 2016. Fun. Something. <laughs> Fuck. I'll eat the uh, fuck out of some onion rings. I gotta so, tell you, Joey. Uh, a few years ago, I went. You were you were playing with Joe Rogan. This was in Vegas. Okay. And it was fucking <clears throat> one of the. It was, just, it was the fucking best show that I'd seen ever. Like you, you fucking killed it. And I'm not just saying that, but like it was one of those like when you were on, like you were on, and everybody fucking knew it. You know what I mean? Like you just. I was fucking. I it was I was trying to catch my breath. I was fucking dying so hard. But it was it, it was I think it was one of maybe Ronda was fighting. It was in Vegas, but it was I think it was a few years ago. I was there with Henry Gracie and but it was one of the best shows by far that I, that I've ever seen. It was, <laughs> I lose my mind in Vegas on a Friday night because you, you could because you, you could. Oh, yeah. Sometimes Joe's <laughs> cool with it, and sometimes Joe ain't cool with it. You know what I'm saying? Like, but sometimes. Most nine out of ten times, he's like, fuck, you did what you did, you know? Yeah. So, that listen, night, man, you didn't give a fuck. No, you can't give, you a give a fuck. Listen, it's the same thing when you, to do what you did against Matt Brown, did you give a fuck? No, not at all. What did you learn from that fight? What did you learn from that fight and from the two previous fights before right. that? What did you learn from that You just got to not give a fuck. It's the, and once you've been there, like once yeah. you go down that street, it's an ugly street because you never were raised to be that type of savage. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. But it's 2016, bitch. You want to run with the Jews. You want to pick up an envelope. You got to go deep. You know what I'm saying? You want to run with the Jews. You got to be a little on the mean side. You know, know, this is it. You got to focus on what the fuck you want. And Mm -hmm. when it's the time. You're here with me because I love you. But I knew it. I had a funny fucking feeling. This motherfucker (laughs) might do something crazy. He might do something fucking crazy. And you did it. And that just goes to show you that when you want something, Absolutely. You zero in on it. You zero fucking in on it. You can do whatever the fuck you want. It's just amazing that we always, 
Please, don't we always talk about people know the, they, everybody knows what they need to do. You know, everybody talks about the iPhone, the iPad, you know, I, what the fuck? You know what you need to do, but then we dick around, we beat around right. the bush. Well, I'm going to go do, I don't want to go there, I'm going to do this, I'm going to, you know what you got to fucking mm-hmm. do? Mm-hmm. You know what you got to do? And you did it perfectly. You know, for years you watch uh, fights and the first fucking three minutes you want to shoot yourself. And like professional people, like Gentiles, like, you know, they're measuring themselves out. You know? yeah. That's the smart attack, you know. Uh, Rashad Evans once said that Winkle John told him, you know, if you hear them boo, you're doing your job correctly. Listen, as a fighter, really? every time you see that, bro, the best three fights I ever saw were in San Francisco. They all ended within two minutes. <laughs> somebody was yelling and screaming, Stad. Somebody was bleeding within two minutes. <laughs> and this guy don't trade no cardio. He just knows you're on the street. You got to do or die, bitch. Yeah. It's me against him and the bus is coming. So I got to fight this guy before the fucking bus gets here. And that's just, you know, everybody makes this big fucking deal about it. You want to go out there and fucking get it. Mm-hmm. That's it. Go out there and fucking get it, man. Period. That's, that's it. It's, but we never really want to face that. For the first time, after 25 years, I've been doing comedy the right way. I listen to my sets, I take notes. Mm-hmm. And it's a complete different world for me lately. I'm like, Jesus fucking Christ. This is, <laughs> I hate hearing my voice, but if I got, it's like every 30 minutes I listen to, you get one gem. What's a gem, Joey? Even if it's one fucking line, right? I'll take it. The rest of this shit get dumped in the toilet. <laughs> I'll fucking take it. Mm-hmm. I don't even know what we're talking about. Anymore. No, I know. I have when no I fucking idea what we're talking about. <laughs> People, because, I mean, even my coach, they'd be like, if you just stop fucking giving a sh- stop trying to control, if it makes sense to control the outcome, just let, you know, just fucking go. Just att- like, if nobody's going to stop you, then it's like one of those things you're kind of, uh, the control freak part of you is like, oh, you know, I don't want to, it's like, fuck that. When it, when it, you know, and then it's like, you see it when you just when you just fucking stop giving a fuck, you know. People are waking up to a to a fat guy with a pin light in their eye. You know, it's like they're waking up from a, a canvas nap, and that's just like I gotta stop. I gotta stop giving a fuck. It's really it's 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 true though. It's I gave a fuck till I was about twenty two. I thought life was real. You're like you know what I'm saying? Like life is fucking real. You got you gotta help women across the street and put your jacket down in a puddle when you see some fucking hot broad walking. <laughs> And see how that lasts. That backfires on you. Then when you put the fucking heaters on, you play. It's called playing for keeps. Mm-hmm. You know, it really is called playing for keeps, and you, and you rise to the fucking occasion. It's it's just beautiful. <coughs> what do you see, brother? What do you see next? Not not an opponent. What do you see for you? What do you want to fucking do, man? You want to go for this one seventy? You got? Yeah. Oh yeah. No, this I. Is it. It's fucking. This is it. I mean, I'm I'm ready to go and. uh I want that world title, so it's, I'll, you know, I'll fight again before the end of the year, and, uh... You're writing your goals down and put shit. the three, You're yeah. writing it down, yeah. you're gonna become the world fucking champion, Absolutely. you're gonna train, be I a savage, right. yeah. be a savage, eat fucking dog bones for breakfast. <laughs> be a fucking junkyard dog, I... Fuck it. it. And we're it, down at Kings, man, it's, it's a fucking new world down there, too, it's got so many killers, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. you see, you know, the Dos Santos, Verdum, both fucking world champs, and now it's like... It's 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 there, you know. You put together three, two, three wins, and we're right there fighting for the title. So I'm in. I'm all in. If I was 25 and gonna be a heavyweight, I'd just go down there and smack Verdum every day. Like, let's go, bah! What's the story, bitch? Let's do this shit. <laughs> yeah. I let him fuck me up. I apologize. I come back a week later. Bah! There you go. What, bitch? <laughs> That's how you get better, fighting fucking Verdum every day, right? Because that guy will definitely catch you. Mm -hmm. He'll catch you. He'll let you bitch slap him. He'll go down on purpose. He'll let you hit me. Go ahead, hit Mm -hmm. me. Bam, he'll go down on purpose, and you'll see that leg lingering. That leg will linger, (laughs) that little leg. It's like a dead leg. It just lingers. And all of a sudden, as you go to see if he's alive or awake, that leg just comes up and throws you in a weird position. Next thing you know, they got the bottom of your shirt with one finger, and they're pulling you towards them, and the other leg's <laughs> yeah. doing this, and now the hand is grabbing the bottom of your fucking socks, and you're going for a fucking loop. It's it's yeah. a, it's fucking great. Hey, listen, man, it was great that uh, you came on, and it was great to see you, you back on the... Uh, there was nobody happier than me. I went right to Twitter. Where is this fuck? Because like, we used to have Twitter conversations. Are you yeah. performing Thursday night? Fuck yeah, I'm yeah. performing. You want to come by? Yeah, early show. Who else used to come? 
There was one Connor Hume was mm-hmm. around then. Yeah. Connor Hume mm-hmm. would come to the Friday night shows in Irvine and there was somebody else. The tap out guys. Yeah. What happened Dan, to the tap out guys? They're they're kinda you know, they're doing their thing. Um The little guy had a, the little guy had a show. Dan, yeah. Yeah, he's been busy. I haven't I haven't talked I haven't talked to him in a while though. I haven't talked to him in a little while. No. They're, they're, and the tall guy, Skype. Yeah. What the fuck is Skype? Uh, I don't know. They got like that 20 mil and just moved to Brazil. <laughs> they said, fuck it. We're going to go eat acai balls. Shit. No more wigs. Yeah. I've spent enough on wigs. It's over. We're going to fucking Brazil. We're sp- I don't think he was Brazilian. Yeah. He used to come to all the fucking shows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And one day he disappeared. I guess when they bought him out, they said, listen, here's an extra 10 million. Don't come to the UFC show no more either. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We're gonna send you to Bernie Sanders fucking bar. <laughs> Once we send you there, nobody leaves there, right? <laughs> yeah. Man, thank you. Thank, thank you, you for coming no, it's, on. It's an honor. I, I appreciate you having me. No, you're fucking great and uh, I can see that you're back and blah 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 blah. But <laughs> your family and uh, good luck to you, Thanks, whatever brother. the fuck you wanna do. <laughs> Lee, what's going on with you? Well, I actually I have a new website. You do? Yeah. It's what a, is this called now? What is this? What is this website of death called? It's called Lee Side Consulting, and my okay. uh, my buddy Rob at Johnson Creative made it for me. So, if nice. you're interested, just go to Lee Side Consulting. Lee Side Consulting. And what can I get consulted on? Tell on me starting a, a podcast. But I do. I've been doing a lot of Skype consultations, and it's, it's really great. I've just just really a quick hour and just get you the equipment. What and, if? Let's say what if? Yeah. Me and Jake want to start like a porno. <laughs> Live webcam oh, podcast. I, I, I sense the so you listen, might. listen to this. Listen to this idea, man. Okay. You always hit me with fucking ideas. Let me give you an idea. How about two <laughs> hot chicks and a chubby dude? Let's pretend you. We'll put you in the middle. I like it and already. We'll put you in a table like this, and two chicks or a guy with a big dick and some chick just bang and do sexual things, and you narrate, like you and her narrate. Like right now, he's doing the. This move, I could say, if you guys could be here, you could smell it. <laughs> casual sex. Yeah, like casual but sex. Yeah. That's the podcast and charge by the minute, like 52 bucks by the minute. And, uh, are we'll you saying you. we can use this table for that? No, no, I didn't say this table. This table is a Catholic table. <laughs> I'm a Catholic. You can't have dirty bitches on this fucking table. <laughs> you baptize the table. Yeah, you baptize the table. So I'm just saying, Lee, that's a show you should consider. Or maybe you and a hot girl. And she sits right there and looks at the guy's asshole and says, stick your finger in it and you have to cheer. You know, whatever. I don't know. And people have to pay by the hour. We're wasting our time. We're wasting our time. We could be doing a porno fucking podcast with live fucking streaming and live announcers. Not a bad idea. Only a nice fucking slick Jewish person would think of something like that, Lee. That's how (laughs) I roll. See, I'm a Cuban Jew, Lee. I've been telling you that for fucking years. Nobody thinks like me. Give me the paperwork, please. For the love of Christ, I'm trying to throw you codes. You're looking around. Thank you. You're welcome. Unbelievable people. You don't know what I have to deal with (laughs) the other night. I thought he was going to die on me. I didn't know what to do. He had me all scared. I'm sorry. No, I don't give a fuck. I would have taken, I would have put a carpet, I would have rolled you up in this carpet, (laughs) taking you up to the 170. You know me. I don't know what happened to him. He left in the Volkswagen. I'll get some fucking Diagostino fingerprints and put them on your door. (laughs) And that's it. I don't know what happened. I know him in the will. He left the will. I would do a will that night. I would have done a will with your little dead Jew hand. I would have taken that pencil and wrote, Lisa, I had, he left me everything. <laughs> Thanks to pizza, we all binge eat. Thanks to Netflix, we all binge watch. But now with texture, we can start binge reading. Trust me, it's about to be a thing. When it comes to magazines, you know what you like, and when texted, you can get all the magazines you want in one super convenient place. Texture has completely reimagined magazines, giving you the articles, stories you really want, all in one place, plus, plus interactive features, videos, and recommendations just for you. The Texture app lets you tap into the world's most popular magazines anytime, anywhere. Breeze through hundreds of your favorite magazines, including back issues, and pick the articles that interest you the most. Texture Texture has made it easy for you to find articles you care about. I don't just get to read, you know, like uh, Road and Track and Macworld, all right? I get, you also get Fitness, Field and Stream, Bone Up a Teeth, Cooking Light, Cycle World, Sports Illustrated Kids. 
I mean, the list goes on and on and on and on. Sign up for Texture right now and gain insider access to all the content from the world's best publications. The best part is, here is, Texture's offering my listeners a free trial right now when you go to texture.com slash joey. That's right. Go to texture.com slash joey. I'm going to give you a free trial right now. What I'm going to give you is a median entry to all the top magazines, including back issues and, and, who do you think you're dealing with? Bonus video content. Start binge reading for free right now when you go to texture.com slash joey. Again, that's texture.com slash joey. The texture app is entirely digital, so it's super environmentally friendly way to consume the best magazines and articles. Again, texture.com slash joey. For all you fucking BJJ savages, listen to me. From geese to a fanny pack to my bag, all I wear is the dot Tusara. The bag is tremendous. I got the water bottle. I got the other water bottle. I got my protein powder. I got my knee braces in there. I got fucking my wall in there. I got I got a, a, a cool towel in there. I got another cool towel. I got my nose spray in there. They got a thousand fucking pockets. You understand me? It is tremendous. They even give you a bag to put your dirty shit in there. So you, your regular shit doesn't touch your little rash guard that smells like 10 dead Iranians. You understand? That? <laughs> now you don't have to have that shit in there. You take it out, you spray your little Lysol in there. The fanny pack from Datsusara, tremendous. When I fly, when we go to Austin Lee, we're going to fucking put the fanny pack on and take pictures and roll. What do we got in there? Rolling papers, lighters, a phone, an extra phone, an extra phone just in case we end up in Mexico. Rolling papers in a baggie in case the plane goes down. Matches, waterproof the ones you like. That's what you put in a fucking knapsack. You understand me? In a fanny pack. Anyway, if you're looking for high quality rash guards, a tremendous hemp gi, a tremendous jujitsu bag, a tremendous fanny pack, the list goes on and on. Go to dsgear.com right now. Take a look at the great stuff they have. If there's anything you like, go to the box and press in. Joey. Boom! And get 5% off your order. Who's better than that? You understand me? Again, let's say you... Want to do some jujitsu, but you also want some supplements? Go to honor.com right now. There you have it, too. They deliver right to your fucking door. Alpha Brain, 100% guarantee. Shroom Tech, Shroom Tech Sport, Shroom Tech Immune, and the list goes on and on and on. But I ain't got the fucking time. Neither does Jake Ellenberg. He's got to get on the five and head south. What you need to do is go to honor.com right now and press in. Church. Boom! Get 10 motherfucking percent off, and this shit gets delivered to your door like a doctor. You understand me? All you need is a Chinese hooker with the wrong address, and you're living like a fucking doctor. <laughs> anyway, I want to thank Dr. Sarah. I want to thank fucking Honit. And I want to thank my people over at Texture.com. Go to Texture.com right now and get your little magazine app and fucking read your way to death. You understand me? Text Not your, what is it? Slash Joey. Texture.com slash Joey. And that's it. I love you guys. We'll be back Sunday night. Stay black. Stay beautiful. And that's it. I want to thank my man, Jake. Ellen Berger and my main man Lee Syatt and that's it stay black have a great weekend for the love of money the OJs that's what you're gonna put on I'm sorry I didn't get it to you <laughs> and my bitches go home it's a cold world out there oh, my bitches go home